Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thank you for making your way here for checking out the episode. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Why, that way you get three new interviews sent to you every single week. A new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can also grab us anywhere you get your uh, podcast from. Spotify, Apple Podcast, NPR, WFPK.org. Consequence, YouTube right here for the video versions. Anywhere you get your podcast, you can subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. That's me, Kyle Meredith. Today we're going to be talking about the movie Out of My Mind, playing now on Disney with Judith Light and Courtney Taylor. Judith Light, legendary actress, Who's the Boss, Ugly Betty, The Menu, just to name a few. Courtney Taylor, she's done her time on uh, Insecure and Abbott Elementary, among many others. We're going to be talking about this uh, beautiful, heartwarming film called Out of My Mind. Again, it's playing now on Disney. Uh, it's about uh, Melody Brooks, a sixth grader with cerebral palsy. Uh, has a quick wit, has a quick wit and a sharp mind, but because she's nonverbal and uses a wheelchair, she's not given the same opportunities as her classmates. When a young educator notices her students' untapped potential, and Melody starts to participate in mainstream education, Melody shows what she has to say is more important than how she says it. We're going to talk about uh, the, the the beautiful story uh, that uh, that they're a part of here, acting in this. What it means, what it says, what you should take away from it, and uh, and some fun costumes as well. All that and more. So let's get into it. It's called Out of My Mind, playing now on Disney. It's Kyle Meredith with Judith Light and Courtney Taylor. Hello, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. It's a pleasure to meet you both. Uh, let me be another one today to congratulate you all on being sp uh, part of such a, a beautiful story uh, with Out of My Mind. Um, telling the story of someone who literally has no voice. Uh, Courtney, maybe we'll start with you. What makes this this movie so special? Um, I think just being a part of a character's life where I'm speaking up for them in the ways they need. Um, I feel like I've always wanted to be that woman who is brave and speaks up for the people who need the most speaking up for. And being able to play that um, is just a wonderful addition to my life where I'm able to implore other people to do the same. And I think it's, I think it's a really wonderful role. Yeah. Judith, I think you'd, uh, you'd said in another interview that you really hope that um, this would lead to more empathy, having a story like this. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you can expand on that a little bit, because uh, I, I mean, the story certainly points in that direction. Yeah, we've been talking about that a lot this morning and we were talking about it a lot when we were when we were actually shooting the film is that we don't always um, when people don't look like they're supposed to or the way that normal people do or they are in a wheelchair or they have some kind of disability, we hold them as the other. And we treat them differently and we dismiss them and they are a human being. And when you treat people that way, um, it is un there is untold pain added to someone's life. And when you can actually care for them with understanding and kindness and really hear them, not just listen to them, but really hear them, you can actually make a kind of difference in someone's life that um, that you wouldn't otherwise have that opportunity. And this film is an absolute demonstration of what it means to actually really make an impact on someone else's life and on a system subsequently. Yeah. And I, I love a story like this. I mean, I, you know, I don't mean to compare apples and oranges, but, you know, you have a small story with a big concept. There are no there are no villains. There are no street fights. You know, it, it doesn't have to go through any of that to, to kind of paint the picture. Like, is that noticeable for you all when you're making a movie like this? You know, I, I don't um, I don't know that we noticed it so much as we were making the film. I think all of us came on board knowing that this was what it was that, you know, um, but superheroes come in all kinds of forms. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think in many ways, um, Courtney's character and my character are superheroes for Melody, just like her parents are. But we are her advocates. We are until she can find her voice. In many ways, we are her voice. So, you know, you don't have to look, we love the Marvel stuff. We think a lot of that stuff is great. It's all terrific. But this is a different kind of um, marvelous character. 
Nicely done. Nice, Nicely nice. Done. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Courtney, you know, there are these lines in there, like when you say, why aren't you angry? I mean, that is one of the most powerful moments in the film. And even thinking about, you know, setting this, the whole story in, in the 2000s, I think it was what, 2002, I believe it's it set yeah. in. Like, like, what do you think that gave to the situation? Um, I think it just... Because I feel like even now, there are moments where I feel like we, any marginalized community isn't taken seriously. And I feel like at that time when there was no help in that arena, I think even Dr. Ray's character, who is a doc, who's a doctorate and she's a black woman, like, I think she even gets angry when she's told, like, when when she's when she may have moments where people are doubting her and 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 feeling like she's not educated enough or she has the she she understands how things work, and I think that's where that comes from. That like why aren't you angry? Because I'm angry. I'm angry for you. I'm angry for me. So um, I think it's just I think it's something that showcases that time period. Also showcases just you know how your the anger is not what you need. It's 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 the it's the consistency. And I think, I think, you know, um, Melody's, Melody reminds me of that in that moment. Like, why aren't you angry? Like, she's like, well, you know, she makes a joke. And it's like, I, I guess I, you got to keep going. Like, even if it makes you angry, you got to keep going. Yeah. Judith, I'll, I'll wrap up with this one too. And I'm running out of time here. Um, how much do the, uh, the costumes help the character? Because those are some fantastic shirts you get to wear in this movie. <laughs> how about the costumes? I mean, we had talked about that when you have a great costume designer, always and i know courtney would probably feel the same way it's like when you put on a costume it is your um it is an outward expression of what you're feeling inside and so with this there was a lot of brightness and aliveness and a striving to be noticed in a way and that is very much um, Mrs. V has her own feelings of her own aloneness, her own otherness. That was what's great about the levels of, uh, in the script of these characters. And so it's the same thing with anything that you, the makeup, the hair, the, the costume actually is helping you to define your character in a, in a very powerful way. And you notice it and I, I'm sure the costume uh, designer would be <laughs> about that. <laughs> uh, it is a very powerful film. Congratulations to you both on on everything about this. And, uh, and thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it. Absolutely. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for, uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.